Welcome back to the next episode in Love Your Story Interview Land. Have you ever watched the Olympics and wondered what it takes to be one of those athletes who dominate their sport? One of these people who make it to the very top performance level. What type of mind control do they have to conquer the fears, the fatigue, the overwhelm? While the Olympics are the display of physical prowess and control, behind the scenes it is a game where one must find control of the mind, the stories that can so easily beset us. Well, today I am talking with Shannon Happy, two-time Olympic medalist and moguls, a U.S. women's freestyle skier and world champion, and we're talking about her story and what it takes to garner that type of success. Stay tuned. Stories are our lives in language. Welcome to the Love Your Story podcast. I'm Lori Lee, and I'm excited for our future together of telling stories, evaluating our own stories, and lifting ourselves and others to greater places because of our control over our stories. This podcast is about empowerment and giving you, the listener, ideas to work with in making your stories work for you. Story power serves you best when you know how to use it. Shannon was born and raised in Lake Tahoe, California, and moved to Salt Lake City, Utah in 1998 to pursue her dream of making the U.S. ski team and to ultimately compete for the USA at the Winter Olympic Games. She made the U.S. ski team that very same year and had continued success for the next 12 years. She competed on six world championship teams, three Olympic teams, brought home two Olympic medals, wow, seven World Cup wins, one overall World Cup title, and six national titles. Look who we have on today, holy cow. Since her retirement in 2010, she and her husband, Matt, started up and in 2013 sold their first company called Silver Bean Coffee. She now has her plate full again with a four-year-old little girl named Zoe and is now working as a ski champion for Deer Valley and has recently launched a corporate team building and inspiration company called Team Empower Hour. So Shannon, welcome to the Love Your Story podcast. Yay, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you and to get the skinny on how, how you got to this level of accomplishment. You are something else. Oh my goodness. Well, I just have to say that when people read that, I just don't associate that with me. I'm just little old Shannon Barkey from California, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, who is the real Shannon? Deep down, what do you want us to know about you aside from this list of accolades? You know, I think the thing that I want people to know about me is that I am, I'm just like everybody else. I have fears every single day. You know, I wake up thinking there's no way that I could possibly do that. And, you know, getting that, like your heart racing and, and setting those goals and, and feeling afraid. So I'm just like everybody else. And, and I think more than that is that I'm average. <laughs> I've never been that one that's like, oh my gosh, she's going to bring home two Olympic medals or oh my gosh, she's going to start this business. You know, I've, I've just always been that one that at every corner has tried to prove people wrong. I've never been that one that's set up for success. So for me, it's all about the fight, the grit that, you know, getting in there and getting it done, getting dirty and, you know, hopefully having some results. <laughs> well, you must be one tough woman then because the things you've done are amazing. How did it feel? to medal in the Olympics. Take us to that story. What was that trip like? Oh my gosh, it was so incredible. You know, I mean, as a little girl watching, I'll never forget watching Christy Yamaguchi, the figure skater. And just watching her skate the ice with this huge smile on her leg above her head, I was just like, oh, I wanna be her. So, you know, I, I had this dream about being in the Olympics ever since I was young. And standing in the gate in 2002, you know, one of the things that I always like to do is I like to look up at the sky and then look up at the mountains and then look at the crowd and, and then focus on the task at hand. And in that moment in 2002, I just knew that everything was gonna be okay. Everything that I had worked for was, you know, was gonna come together. And I've never felt that before or since. And I put down the most, the best run that I could have in that moment 
and you know to, to have my whole family down there my coaches you know team USA all of all of the Americans that were there cheering it was just it's such a surreal moment and it will be with me forever oh my gosh isn't that awesome that you felt it like that there was that almost like were you just in the zone and you knew it was gonna happen or was it just almost like a an internal piece that comes from preparation and you could see it. I mean, whatever it was, it was really cool. I know. And it was so funny because um, I don't know if you're familiar with my sport. Not very many people are, but we have we have two runs during the Olympics. Our first run is a qualifying run. And then we have our final run and our final run. They only take the top 16. They wipe the score clean. They reverse the order of finish and then you go. And so in that moment, I just felt this inner peace and just everything was going to be okay and it was such a far cry from my first run where i literally looked down at my legs and thought oh my gosh they're not part of my body <laughs> and oh, my mom was down at the bottom of the hill you know all my family was but my mom remembered looking at my face in the, in the big jumbo screen thinking oh my gosh she looks like a deer in the headlights she's not going to be able to do this she looks like she's going to fall over so it was so funny you know those two feelings to have um but then to end on the really good one and come home with this silver medal was very special congratulations that's so <laughs> thank awesome thank you <laughs> so if i can be frank with you when i look over all the things that you've accomplished in your young life relative young life i am a little in awe of what appears to be just an incredibly kick-ass life with a tremendous amount of success not only are you a world-class athlete and champion but you've also proved yourself to be savvy in business and you have a successful marriage and family life, that's a lot of fronts to be winning on. But <laughs> <laughs> I, so it's funny, I feel like I'm failing at all of them most of the time, you know, as I think most mothers do like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing this well and I'm not doing that. And my husband, I need to cook dinner more. And, you know, so I always feel instead of a sense of accomplishment, I always feel like there's so much more that I could be doing, but there's just not enough time in the day. <laughs> wow. You are normal. <laughs> yes. Very normal. <laughs> I haven't taken a shower yet today. That's nice. Good thing it's not a video, huh? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. So all this success behind you, we all know that no one really succeeds at that level without falling down and having to get back up, right? So the real success doesn't happen without a learning curve and with failures that teach us the lessons we learn. So would you get real with us and can you share the inside story of what it took to overcome? Well, first of all, maybe what are the obstacles that you ran up against in your young skiing career? You started when you were 12, right? Yeah. So I actually started skiing when I was three and okay. started mogul skiing when I was 12 and then mm -hmm. made the U.S. ski team when I was 18. Awesome. Okay. So in order to do that and in order to compete at that level, what kind of obstacles did you run up against? Mental and um, outward as well. Well, you know, I think just to make the U.S. ski team, one of the hardest things that I that I always had to deal with was was really never being good enough. You know, I was always in the middle of the pack, and um, you know, there were always girls that were better than me, whether it was skiing or jumping. And so, you know, in my young career, I really tried to emulate who was best, you know, okay. Oh my gosh, Christy Tibbetts. She was like one girl that I always tried to look up to. And I just tried to be her, you know, everything that she could do well. But when I, when I made the ski team, I really realized, you know, in order to be better than everybody else, I had to find a different way. I couldn't do it like those other girls had to do it. And so I think that was really a shift in kind of my mentality of how I trained. It was like, oh my gosh, I can't just be like everybody else. I have to be the best that I can be. And and I never was the absolute best skier out there. I mean, I, I can tell you that right now, but what I really was good at was capitalizing on me. When I was in that moment and I was in the gate, I could capitalize capitalize on what I was good at, not what anybody else was good at. Mm -hmm. And when you ask about, you know, obstacles that you have to overcome in 2002, um, I almost didn't make the Olympic team. And, you know, I was in the gym, the first one there, the last one to leave, you know, working on the snow as hard as I could. But what I didn't have was the mental toughness. And it was that year that I started to work with a hypnotherapist to really focus in on that mental toughness and what I had to do to prepare my mind. And a lot of athletes, you know, work 
with um, sports psychologists and, and it's a little bit different than that, but it just gave me all the confidence to believe in like every fiber of my whole being that I was good enough and that I had the mental preparation as well as the physical preparation in my mind every single day, I would do a hundred perfect runs mm. in my mind. And to a lot of people, they're like, that's crazy. Well, that may be crazy, but that's, you know, that's, that's what it took it. to win. <laughs> okay. So what I'm really loving about that is that of how mental, how the stories in our heads, right? How what's going on in our head is an absolute determinant of where we get to, of what we're able to accomplish, of overcoming fear and that belief in self. Like that really hits home for me. And the things that we talk about on this podcast, I, I'm always personally going back to the idea that you have to believe before you can create. You know, you have to believe that something is possible before you can create it. And we've talked about that a number of times, but I, when you were speaking with your hypnotherapist, is that what you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did that look like? What kind of things did he train you in? You know, a lot of it was, um, we, you know, we constantly live on the outside and all these things that are coming at us, whether it's emails or texts or, you know, people constantly talking and you kind of have to get yourself into a relaxed state. So that's why so many people love yoga, you know, cause you work on your breathing and you work on kind of pushing all those things out. So it's very much like meditation of kind of getting your, you know, yourself into a very relaxed state and, and just telling yourself, you know, hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of times that you are good enough. And the reason that you're good enough is because you've worked this hard. And I think that was really big because you can tell yourself, you know, on the outside every day, oh my gosh, I'm awesome. I'm great. But until you can get into that relaxed state, and, and allow your body to really soak it in, you know, into, into your, I call it your, just your internal, you know, things. Um, I, I just don't think you can really a hundred percent believe that. So I worked on a ton of meditation, relaxation, breathing, you know, those were the things where you can really be true to yourself and, you know, give yourself the power to believe in, in your training. I love that. And I didn't foresee this before the interview, but I feel like that is a magnificent tool. We're always talking about getting control of the voices and the, and the stories that we're telling about ourselves in our own heads. I feel like mm -hmm. that is one of the most crucial parts of personal story work is the stories that we're telling ourselves. And you are just naturally branching right into this. In order to succeed, you have to truly get to that place of internal belief in yourself where you are creating stories that are positive and supporting of where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, but more than that is really, is really conv convincing yourself of why you're worth it. You know, cause so many people I think just have these, like, I can do it. We're going to be great. But why is that? You know? And for me, it was reminding myself how much I worked on the Hill, how strong I was in the gym, having those perfect runs in my mind, you know, that way when you step in the gate or when you get to any pressure situation, you know, you just want to go on autopilot. And, and I think that, you know, when athletes talk about being in the zone, it's not so much about being in the zone. It's about being on autopilot and doing exactly what you've been training for. So when I talk a lot about with kids, you know, I'll say, you know, has anybody heard about, you know, practice makes perfect. And everybody's like, yeah. And I'm like, no, <laughs> perfect practice makes perfect, you know, because if you just go out there and slap the ball around or just ski around or, you know, hit balls, it, it, that's not going to work. It's what's perfect about it. That when you can step into that gate and execute, that's what's make, that's what makes winners. And that's okay. what you can wrap your mind around, you know? So how did those mental tricks or did they come into play when you were creating a business? You know, it was the same thing. I think there, there's so many scary things out there, all the things that can go wrong in business, you know, and it's, it's going to bed every night and telling yourself, you know, I, I've done this, I've worked this hard. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I get myself, you know, cause you can get yourself so wrapped up and you're breathing a shell like, <gasps> I'm so, I'm so afraid to, for tomorrow and I've got this big meeting and oh my gosh, and you just have to be like, no, I'm ready for this. You know, I've, mm -hmm. I've written the proposal. I've, I've done it a hundred times in my head. I know that I'm going to knock it out of the park tomorrow. 
and, and you can sleep well knowing that. It's when you don't have that preparation that you can, you know, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so you have to prepare and then mentally prepare and then execute. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Do you use it as a mother, as a wife? Oh my gosh. I think being a mom is by far and away the hardest job because there's no one way to do anything. There's one way to do a squat in a gym. You know, there's one one way to increase your strength, but there's thousands of different ways to be a good mom. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, as we walk through life and you make those choices, I always think as a mom, the right choice is the hard choice. And, you know, if, if it just seems easy to do something like, oh, if they just stop this, if I just put them here and do that, the easy choice is usually not the right choice. Putting them in front of the TV is not the right choice. <laughs> well, sometimes it's not. <laughs> sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. But, you know, I mean, but there's always those hard things that we do and you just, you know, you have to trust who you are and what you know and what you believe mm. and, and just kind of get yourself into that place that you are, you're making these decisions out of love. So I always, I always start with that. Like I can't, you know, I love Zoe so much and this decision is so hard, but it's made from love. So it has to be the right thing for me. <laughs> That's awesome. Hopefully, crossing my fingers that tomorrow is the same way. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, what advice would you give to people who, you know, are running into all of these same things, the, the fearful stories that pop up, the self-doubt that pops up on this topic? What do you have other advice that you would want to share or stories of, of overcoming? Well, you know, I think that it's different for everybody. And, you know, so many people deal with adverse situations in different ways. And I've always been a believer of learning. So I constantly read books. And some books, I mean, I'll get through half of them and be like, oh my gosh, this is a load of malarkey. It doesn't resonate with me. But to somebody else, that may be the thing that changed their life, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think the thing that I don't want people to think that there's something wrong with them because what we are and what we're doing today is going to set us up for who we are tomorrow and the people that we ultimately are every single day. And I think we always ha constantly have to, you know, want to learn and want to be better and just read and be knowledgeable and, and listen to podcasts and listen to people that inspire you because you never know what you're going to pick up and help you during that day. So it was really funny going into 2010 Olympics. Um, I, I was feeling like I had a huge weight on my shoulders and it was really funny. I was reading, I love Kindles, um, nooks, like the electronic readers totally changed my life. Instead of bringing 30 books on the road, I just brought like a Kindle. Um, so anyway, I was reading through these titles and I found this book called 10 minute toughness. And I just thought, well, that's really funny. Cause something about Mary, the guy had, you know, eight minute abs and he's like, this is amazing until somebody comes up with seven minute abs. <laughs> so that like ran through my mind and I was just laughing and I bought that book solely off of my experience with something about Mary and that book completely changed my life. And I never would have, you know, I never would have picked that up. And so I just think those types of just learning and being, you know, open to whatever comes is, is magic. And we all have to do that. You never know where the little pieces are going to come from. But I, I kind of like the whole serendipitous feel of accepting the whole, just the whole of serendipity that each day is going to be this unknown adventure of who knows what will come to you, what pieces, what people, what, what neat abundance is going to come to you. And you just get to be ready. Ready. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love that. And some people are a little scared. I'm always a fly by the seat of your pants kind of gal. <laughs> so to me, that's really exciting. Some people that freaks them out, but I just think, you know, this life is such a crazy journey. And if you don't embrace that, you know, I think goals are such a great thing, but if you don't embrace the every day and how you get there, it's, you know, you just, you got to laugh at yourself. You got to laugh at life and cry a little on the way, but it's all here for a good adventure. I love your spirit. I love your energy. It's lovely. Thank you. I love <laughs> and, yours too. And I, and I wholeheartedly agree with you. <laughs> so you retired in 2010 and you started Teen Empower Hour. What is that? So, you know, I just, I love people for one and, um, and I love, I love movement. I love teaching people to be healthy and to, you know, be in love with movement and working out. 
and I love sharing my Olympic stories. So I thought, what a cool combination. I'm going to start this company on all the things that I love and people always ask of me and kind of package it together. So whenever companies come here or, you know, I travel um, all around the country, but when people come here and they're in a conference for eight hours, they hire me to come in, you know, whether it's in the morning to start it off or after lunch to kind of get some pep back in your step. And we just get around and do a lot of the things that I did as an athlete with a lot of my Olympic story background and we do it to movement. Um, and we still have a focus of, you know, if they're there for a leadership conference, we talk about leadership skills, communication, mental toughness. Um, so it's just, it's a really fun way, I think, to kind of make a connection with an Olympian, you know, instead of just listening to a keynote speech, this is a real way that I can give back to people and share my passion of movement in a different way. So it's really fun. <laughs> pretty cool. I, well, I love you taking the things that you love and the things that you're good at and actively creating the life that you want with all of these things that just make you happy. You got to, you know, I mean, I, I think so much about every day, how I want to spend my day and I don't want to chase money. I don't like those things don't make me happy, but having time with my daughter and my family and, and really just smiling when I go to work every day, those are the things that are really, really important to me. So, you know, I think it's going to be a massive success because I just love it so much. Um, but who exactly. knows? You know, it could be a, it could be a total failure. <laughs> Except it's all, how, how do you measure success? Because if, if you're measuring success by the lives that you touch, and you, you know, and you've already met with, you know, how many groups of how many people you've already had a huge impact. That's success. Yeah, no, it's really fun. And I think another thing that really fuels my fire with my business is all of the people that I will hire as we grow will all be Olympians. So um, I don't know, there's so, there's so many people that really struggle after they retire. You know, they're 30, they don't have a college education. You know, they, all they've known is just this one narrow focus for so long. And I want to be able to give those Olympians with that same drive, that same dedication, a platform to, you know, to kind of take that step into the business world and, you know, to still be up and moving all day, not sitting at a desk um, and, and be able to take what they've learned. You know, we've all learned so much and be able to pass, you know, to pass it forward and pay it forward. That's so cool. I'm, yeah, so I'm really, that's, that's what I, I really hope that I'm successful so that I can help other Olympians be successful as well. We'll see. And that's even magnifying the success factor here is because it's also helping the people that you're going to be working with. So yes, I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> so any parting advice well, first of all, let me ask, if people want to get a hold of you and get more information about Team Empower Hour, how do they do that? How do they reach you? So there's two ways, um, both websites. So I have shannonbarkey.com, B-A-H-R-K-E, or teamempowerhour.com. Or they can find me on social media at Facebook and Instagram. Um, but the websites have really good information and videos and awesome pictures. And it just kind of, you know, a little piece of me in there. <laughs> so I introduced you as Shannon Happy and you refer to yourself as Shannon Barkey. So do you want to explain to them why you have two last names? Well, so when I was competing, um, I was Shannon Barkey. That is my given name. Uh, and then I got married in 10, 10, 10 to the world's best husband, Mr. Happy, Mr. Matt Happy. And so now I legally changed my name because I just, who doesn't want to be Mrs. Happy? Right. <laughs> So I go by either or, you know, whatever, whatever people want to say. And, and I go by both of them. So it's totally fine. Okay. And they can probably find you under both if they're Googling, huh? Yes. The Google works. It's good. <laughs> so parting advice, anything you want to leave us with? You know, I think every day is a journey and, and don't feel frustrated where you are. You know, I think there's, there's been a lot of times in my life where I've had to overcome injuries or, you know, not, not being in a place that I really felt that I should be at that point. And it's all turned out to be such a blessing in disguise. Mm. So I think if we can kind of take this moment of being frustrated, maybe overwhelmed too much on our plate and just kind of taking a deep breath and being like, this is making me the person that I ultimately want to be and give yourself a hug. 
<laughs> I just feel those things all the time. You know, I wake up and I, I do story work in my life every single day. And whether mm -hmm. it's discouragement of not being able to see the outcome of things or putting a lot of effort toward things and, and having it move slower than I want it to move, or whether it's fear or, you know, it's all the same stories that everybody's dealing with. And I'm uber aware of them, of course, because this is the work that I do. Yeah. So I am just constantly working on them. But, but what you just said about being able to step back and look at the bigger picture and say, you know, wh when you're right in it, you have this really tiny, tiny view that deals with frustration, what's right in front of you and whatever you may be seeing. But when you step back and you take in a larger perspective of what you are becoming and what you are working for and the faith you are showing and the positive attitude that you are showing and the intents of your heart and all of the other things that you really positively have going on and accept all of that as a whole and love yourself, I think you come to this place of more peaceful production and living that allows mm -hmm. you to enjoy it rather than be panicked or fearful or overrun by the stories that inevitably end up holding you back or causing you to quit or not letting you get there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in my career, I overcame two blown out knees and a broken wow. jaw. And those at the time, I mean, I felt like I was at, you know, in Death Valley and I had to get to the top of Everest. Mm. And they were just so painful at the time. And now I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. I went through all of those things because they made me find this inner passion and this inner fire that mm. I didn't even knew that I had, you know? And then when I got back to the top again and, you know, when I stood on the top of that podium again, oh my gosh, it just felt so good. So it's okay to be in the depth of hell. It's all right to be there for a little while because when you get yourself out of it, it's just so much better. <laughs> you know, when I was working on my master's degree and I mentioned this in a, an earlier podcast episode, but there was so much work doing it as an adult that was, you know, I'm two hours away from the university. I, I'm actually teaching on campus. And so I have to commute there every day. I'm a single mom, so I'm supporting my family. So I'm also working a full-time job. You so go, te girl. Teaching at the university, doing my research, um, commuting, you know, two hours both ways. Anyway, it was maybe the hardest thing I've ever done. And for two years, like I scheduled when to pee. I mean, it was that, it was that intense on a 24 hour basis. Like I would be grading papers at three o'clock in the morning in my bed and then waking up at six to get there by eight and mm. super, super intense. But when I walked across that stage, when I walked across that campus on graduation day, I had earned every single bit of that. And it was so much, I mean, it was, there was so much satisfaction in yes. wearing that gown and wearing the, the hat and the tassel and walking with my chin. I, like I skipped across campus. I was so happy. I'm like, Yay! I earned every <laughs> single step of this and I'm going to revel in it. Yes. I but, just think the more that we have to work for those things, you know, just the better, the sweeter, the victory when it finally, you know, when we finally get it. <laughs> that, that is for sure. And you would know that with all of the things that you've done. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for taking the time to share part of your story and your insights and the things you've learned. Fantastic. Thank you. It was such an honor to be here and best of luck with everything you do. Fight for every little piece of it, girl. Awesome. <laughs> you go, girl. Thank we'll talk you. to you later. You too. Bye. Bye, Bye. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. I'm grateful to Shannon for taking the time to share her story and insights and for you for being here to listen and learn and hopefully take a piece of inspiration out into the story of your life as you create your story on purpose. Just a reminder about all the resources on the website, www.loveyourstorypodcast.com. Head there for all the Love Your Story episodes, past and present. You can listen to them right on the website or all of your other possible podcast avenues, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play. There are also wonderful resources for you on the website, the free audiobook that you can download. It's our gift to you. Merry Christmas. 
It's called The Key to Your Super Self, How Your Stories Can Unlock Your Power. And also, you can start the 21-day challenge. With a click of a button, you can start your journey with 21 days of super fun challenges that provide basically a structured way for you to try out things that will help add meaning and satisfaction and connection to your life story. Tools like the ones Shannon and I talked about today. Tools that unless you kind of have a guide or a push to help you get there, you often think about them, but you don't actually implement them. Well, the 21 day challenge is there. So every day you get a new challenge. You just have to try one thing. You get to try one thing a day and that guided structured push to, hey, today is going to be performing a random act of kindness, let's say. You get to try out a bunch of different things and see how they affect your life. See the ripple effects that they create for you. So it's a taster's table of story tools to try out. Go to the website and click a button. You can get started on that. And we will see you next week. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.